healthcare traditionally is, uh, in this country anyway, the province of the government. And that partnership between you know, funding agencies and so forth, it's a single payer system. It'll remain so. That model, I think, is a successful one. However, the role of 2.0 tools is going to uh, really create a whole lot of opportunities for different types of relationships to arise that have never really been possible in an environment where the government's not just a single payer, but in many ways a monolithic uh, construct that, uh, that is uh, responsible for the whole system. So Web 2.0 tools empower patients, and the role of government in many ways is to create standards, uh, whether it's platforms, security protocols, to define uh, personal health records, electronic health records, to describe the roles that are inherent in these technologies in these systems. I see a few different ways in which Web 2.0 tools can uh, really make a difference. One is with uh, data gathering. So we're looking for more evidence-based capabilities in the system. These tools really uh, engage end users, engage patients, engage uh, physicians, nurses, to uh, collect data as part of their day-to-day -day activities. Those data can be aggregated and provide that evidence that enables the system to make better choices, make better decisions. I think the other point goes back to what I was speaking to before, which is that <clears throat> patients themselves will have a much richer set of possibilities to talk amongst themselves, to communicate with their caregivers, and enlist a broader range of caregivers because the technology empowers them in new and different ways. One is, uh, as I referred to before, the empowerment of patients to a, a, the, the greatest extent, patients talking amongst themselves, patients talking to caregivers, patients having access to a broader range of services as these tools create those broader opportunities and greater diversity of options. And then the second thing is really around the evidence-based models that we are seeking and which are going to really make the healthcare system more efficient. And I think that the fact that patients, physicians, caregivers generally will essentially be creating a trackable set of data in their day-to-day -day, uh, use of the healthcare system will create a database that can be tapped for that evidence, both for the direction overall of the healthcare system, as well as for the specific care of that patient in the, their own particular situation and in their interactions with others in similar circumstances. I am, uh, to some extent, involved with social media initiatives. However, it's a very fragmented space right now, and by no means could I uh, pretend to speak for the ministry as a whole. I think that government is in a tough spot because of the inertia which is inherent in any government organization. These are very fast moving technologies and it's hard for government generally to keep up. And health has its own set of challenges where there's a tremendous pressure to devote funds, energy, all of our strategic goals to caring for patients. Funding hospitals, research, all of these sorts of things are obviously going to be high on the agenda. And it's tough to refocus and look at these longer term goals, and in particular when the pace of change is so quick and it makes it a moving target. In terms of current initiatives, there are in the broader public sector in Ontario, a number of pilots, and in some cases there are ministries and individuals within ministries who are leveraging Web 2.0 technologies to reach out 
and to create value for citizens. However, in health, it's embryonic. And there's not a whole lot of outreach at this point using these tools, uh, really for the reasons that I cited before. Now, that I expect will change, but uh, it's not going to happen overnight. I was at a social media conference recently in Toronto, and there were a number of presenters speaking to case studies of their own social media experiments right. or pilots or initiatives right. that have launched. And these are at all levels of government, uh, from municipal, provincial, federal. And universally, they've had almost zero issues of that kind. People are just not abusing the privilege. They are making use of the technology and creating those dialogues, but there hasn't been the abuse. And I think that uh, certainly within the Ontario Public Service as well, we have uh, OPSpedia, which is an internal social media platform, which combines a wiki tool that's based on, uh, on the, the Wikipedia's uh, platform, uh, along with uh, a WordPress blogging capability. And sort of glue those shows together with a microblogging and, uh, and, and a news stream that is all driven by end users. So this is built on a shoestring, has very little uh, support, but it's garnering tremendous attention. There's 6,000 people using it. It's, it's very heavily trafficked. They have as a, um, as a system in terms of taking things down that are inappropriate, again, it's all done by users. So there's no moderation. On every post, there is a thumbs up and an exclamation point. If you click the exclamation point, you're saying something's wrong here, this is inappropriate. If a second person, again, a user, clicks that exclamation point, it's taken down and a moderator is alerted. That's happened a grand total of once, and it was by mistake since the thing was launched. And that was over two years ago now. So the experience is that people appreciate the tools, that they apply their common sense and the oath that they signed to the new technologies just as they did for telephone, email, all of the traditional technologies. People understand what is and is not appropriate. And your reputation has a whole nother level of meaning when you're in a job, in a, in a, in a career uh, situation because the spillover effects are much greater than those anonymous or semi-anonymous posts you can make online.